I just found out my wife has been lying about loving her stepson and was only thinking about how she could get me to knock her up to start her real family. Posted by you slash simple Archie. English is not my first language, so I apologize for any mistakes. I'm also a mess right now, so I'm sorry if this doesn't make any sense. For context, six years ago, I, 28M, got drunk at a friend's wedding, and a woman, Anna, 39F, who I had rejected multiple times throughout the night, ended up forcing herself on me while I was nearly passed out. It was a whole mess, and I fell into a deep depression afterward. Things got worse when Anna showed up at my door a few weeks later, saying she was pregnant. I begged her to have a termination and leave me alone, but my dad and stepmother welcomed her into our house like nothing had happened. I never wanted to have kids, so when this happened, I made it clear to Anna that I didn't want anything to do with her, but I would pay child support. I also cut contact with my dad for supporting her. After a few months, my son was born, and Anna just disappeared. Nobody knew where she went, or they didn't want to tell me. My dad also refused to help because I had cut him off, so I was on my own. To be honest, I fell in love with my baby right away. Seeing him fight to survive and then holding him in my arms was the happiest moment of my life. While it was hard, I made it work with just the two of us. Then, three years ago, I met my wife, Claire, 26F. We dated for a year and have been married for two. Even when we were just dating, she was always perfect and adored my son, Archie, now 5M. She would play with him, read him stories, and never said anything bad about him. She knew what had happened but was always so loving and understanding, I felt like I had won the lottery by meeting her. The same thing happened when I met Claire's family. Everyone was so welcoming, and they loved Archie so much. They offered to babysit him, and even took him on vacation so Claire and I could have a weekend to ourselves. A few weeks ago, I told Claire that I wanted to have a vasectomy so we could have a better intimate life. She asked me if I was really sure, and when I said yes, she got very quiet and changed the subject. Now, even before we got married, I was very clear that I didn't want any more children. At the time, she said she was fine with that because we already had Archie. I knew she was upset, so I brought it up repeatedly, until she finally admitted that she had been hoping I'd change my mind so we could have another child. Claire said she understood why I didn't want kids in the first place due to my childhood, but she felt that I had become a perfect dad to Archie, and would be a perfect dad for our second child too. She also mentioned that she had asked him if he wanted a little brother or sister, and he had been very excited about it. I got upset when she said this and accused her of trying to manipulate my son, which led to a big fight between us. The next day, she apologized, but still wanted me to think it over. She said she'd support me no matter what I decided, but that this was important to her. I told her that I was hurt because she had never mentioned this before, and she responded by saying that she was allowed to change her mind. Finally, she suggested that we talk with her parents so I could hear from them before making a decision. I admit I freaked out because I didn't want to discuss my intimate life with my in-laws, but she assured me that she had only told them because they were close, and she was looking for advice on how to bring it up to me. Anyway, last night we had dinner with her parents, and it was a disaster. I explained how I'd never wanted kids until Archie was born, and even then, he was the exception. In response, they told me how much Claire wanted to have a child of her own, and how this could be good for all of us. Things got messy when they mentioned they wanted to have their first grandchild. I told them that Claire and I had been discussing her adopting Archie, and my mother-in-law said, but he still wouldn't be my real grandson. They also said they loved my son, but they couldn't love him like a real family member because they weren't related by blood. Finally, my wife admitted she was having second thoughts about the adoption because Archie already had a mom, and she didn't think she'd be able to bond with him like a real mother, which is also why she wanted to have a child of her own. I was devastated, but I didn't want to make a scene in front of my in-laws, so I just told them I'd think about it and asked for some time. So now I'm sitting at home thinking that I don't really know Claire. I didn't know she felt this way about my son, and I'm wondering if she has been pretending all this time. If we have another kid, I believe she and her family will just ignore Archie in favor of their real grandchild. And if we don't have another child, I fear she will resent us or even become abusive toward my son. But at the same time, I don't want to throw away an otherwise perfect relationship because I really love Claire. Would I be wrong if I divorced my wife over this? I don't know if I'm overreacting or if this relationship can be saved. Any advice would also be welcome since I don't have anyone else I can talk to right now. Edit. Thanks everyone for the comments. I haven't been able to reply to everyone, but I'd like to answer some questions. Did I talk to my wife about not having children before we got married? Yes, we had the discussion at least three times, and she always said she was okay with it. Do I treat her like a nanny, or is there money involved? No. I earn more than she does, but she still has a good job. She works from home, but Archie is still in daycare because I want him to socialize with other children, and I didn't want her work to be affected by having to look after a toddler all the time. Will I get therapy? I've had a therapist for four years now, and Archie is also in therapy. Why didn't I have a vasectomy years ago? I have no excuses here, I'm just an idiot. Why did I get married after only one year of dating? We were both in love and rushed into things. I'm also an idiot for this, apparently. Did I get a DNA test? I didn't get a paternity test right away when he was born because I didn't care. I had already put my name on his birth certificate, and after Anna left, I just wanted to take care of him. 
I did eventually get a paternity test done, spoiler alert, he is mine, but it was mostly for legal purposes since I wanted to take him out of the country for a job opportunity. What happened to Anna? Who knows? I never heard from her after she left. My dad said he didn't know anything, and my friends from the wedding said they didn't know where she went either. Did I report Anna? I tried. Unfortunately, I grew up in a country with some outdated ideas, and I wasn't taken seriously by the police. Finally, I know that my in-laws were biased and would take Claire's side. I knew that when I agreed to have dinner with them, but I genuinely wanted to know if there was something Claire wasn't telling me. I was, and still am, confused and full of doubts about the whole kids thing, so I wanted to understand where she was coming from and what she was feeling. I just never imagined they felt the way they did about my son. Update 1 one day later. I appreciate everyone who took the time to read my previous post and commented with their advice. I was happy to see so many people sharing their own experiences as step-parents or stepchildren and those who tried to put themselves in my wife's shoes. It gave me a new perspective, and that helped a lot. I also noticed some people asking for an update, so here it is. Since Archie plays football every Saturday, I asked a friend of ours, whose son is also on the team, if she could look after Archie for a while. I wanted to have this conversation with Claire without my son present in case we started arguing again, so we just headed home to talk after the game ended. I know a lot of people said I should just divorce my wife, both to protect my son and to let her move on, but, please don't be mad at me, when we sat down to talk, I wasn't ready to give up on my marriage just yet. At that moment, I was willing to compromise with Claire about having a second child, as long as we got couples therapy to address her and her family's feelings towards Archie. Even after the initial fight, when I said I wanted a vasectomy, I was mostly confused about what to do since I just wanted my family to be happy. Anyway, I started by asking her to explain why and when she had changed her mind. Claire immediately began to apologize, and told me that she had always dreamed of having a big family. She said she tried to convince herself that she could accept not having children because she really loved me, and she also loved Archie. She admitted to lying when I asked her about it because she didn't want to break up, and felt I was giving her an ultimatum, either choose to have kids or choose me. I never intended it to be an ultimatum, I just didn't think it was fair for any of us to be in a relationship if our goals didn't align. She also admitted that she had always been hoping I would change my mind once I saw what an excellent mom she was to Archie. What surprised me the most was that, apparently, my mother-in-law had tried to convince Claire not to get married because it wasn't fair of her to expect me to change. Claire also told me it was her mom's idea to babysit Archie and do all those things together so my wife could bond with him and get used to the idea that he might end up being our only child. When I asked why her mom made those comments about blood being important, Claire said she had asked her parents to say that to convince me why it was important for her to have her own kids. I told her how hurt I had been by what they said and when she told me she had changed her mind about the adoption. Claire said she was just scared that one day Archie would want to reconnect with his birth mother and that he wouldn't love her anymore. Apparently, she had been reading a lot of stories from other step-parents who had been cast aside, especially when the birth parents showed up again or if there was a divorce involved. Her anxiety got worse around a year ago. According to Claire, she always introduced herself as Archie's stepmom when she picked him up from daycare because she didn't want to take Anna's place. I lost my patience and reminded her that Anna had abandoned us, so there was no place to take. At this point, we started arguing and going in circles. She accused me of not understanding how hard it is to be a step-parent, and I told her she was fighting against windmills. After we calmed down a bit, she told me she became even more scared of being replaced when Archie started asking about his mom. She also felt guilty because she believed he only asked because she kept correcting everyone about the whole mother-slash-stepmother thing. She also said I made it worse by not telling him the truth about Anna and by trying to sugarcoat things, telling him that his mom felt guilty because he had been born very sick and she didn't want to see him suffer. Honestly, I just didn't know what to tell him because I didn't want him to feel sad about being abandoned. Claire accused me of still caring about Anna, WTF, and said that's why I didn't want to paint her in a bad light. When I told her I just panicked and made up a lie in that moment, she said I should have just refused to answer and taken Archie to a therapist, we did get him one that same month. That's when Claire said I should have tried to find Anna so we could have split custody, and Archie could be with his real mom. I admit I lost it and started yelling at her that Anna was just a horrible person and that if it were up to me, she'd never see Archie. She had essayed me, tried to manipulate me when she got pregnant, and abandoned my son right after he was born. After all these years, she's never bothered to reach out. Claire yelled back, saying I couldn't understand what a woman goes through and that maybe Anna left because of PPD, and I made it worse by just giving up and moving to another country where Anna couldn't find me. I told her that wasn't the reason why we left and she knew it. I also reminded her that everyone who knew me back home had my contact information and address, so it's not like I was hiding. What finally broke me was when she said it was my fault that Anna left because I refused to step up and do the right thing by marrying Anna. She tried to apologize right away and said she didn't mean it, but I just told her to leave and that I wanted a divorce. I'm ashamed to admit it, but I locked myself in Archie's room and cried like a baby until she left. She packed some stuff and later sent me a text saying she'd be staying with her parents. The rest of the day was a blur. I went to pick up my son and briefly told my friend I was getting a divorce. She and her wife hugged me and said they would support us in any way they could, especially if I needed someone to look after Archie. I spent the rest of the day with him, and we decided to have a piamata, just the two of us. We ordered pizza, played with his new toys, and watched some movies until he fell asleep. Since I can't sleep, 
I thought I'd write this update to vent or something. I feel like my life just imploded, and I'm so heartbroken. I don't even know how Archie is going to take it, so that's going to be hard too. Anyway, I guess this is my final update since there's nothing else to say. Thank you again for all the advice.